everyone, I'm Valerie. Welcome to the owner's class video for the Singer Esteem 2 Model 2273 sewing machine. In this video, we're going to go over some great stuff like threading a needle, winding a bobbin, selecting a stitch, and a bunch more. In your box, you get your machine, and you also get an instruction manual and this handy dandy quick start guide full of all sorts of pictures to get you started. Now let's take a closer look at your machine. The first thing we're going to do is plug in our foot control and power cord and turn on the machine. And you'll know the machine is on when the light comes on. On the side we have the hand wheel, which you will always turn towards you, the bobbin winding stopper, the bobbin winding spindle, a handle to make your machine extra portable, the spool pin where we'll put our spool of thread, a stitch width dial, a tension dial which fine tunes the look of our stitches, a metal threading guide, a bobbin winding tension disc, and over here is the take-up lever. We'll go over this more when we thread the machine. On the front we have a stitch length dial, a stitch selector dial, a reverse lever, the needle, the all-purpose presser foot, and to the back we have the presser foot lifter that I can use to raise or lower my presser foot. Here we have the removable accessory tray, and when we take that off, here's a door that I can open, and here is where my bobbin is, in the bobbin case. We'll go over that when we thread the bobbin. In the accessory tray, I can open this door and see all of my accessories inside. Let's take a look at some of those presser feet. In addition to the all-purpose foot that already comes on your machine, you get a buttonhole foot used for making one-step buttonholes, a button sewing foot, this clear foot with the two prongs in the front, and that's used for sewing on buttons. And lastly, you get a zipper foot, which like its name is used for installing zippers, but you can also use it for making and inserting piping. Before we wind our bobbin, first we need to retrieve it from the machine. Open up this little door in the front, and here's your bobbin case. Lift the tab and pull it towards you. And there's your bobbin. This machine uses class 15 transparent bobbins. So if you need to get more bobbins, make sure they are transparent class 15. Any other style of bobbin won't work well in this machine. Take your spool of thread and place it on the spool pin and cap it off with your spool cap. Bring the thread to the first thread guide and then bring it around the bobbin winding tension disc and make sure the thread really gets underneath that screw. Bring the thread over to the bobbin winding spindle and place the thread in the middle of your bobbin and out through one of the holes. There are holes on each side of the bobbin so there's no real designated top or bottom. Snap the bobbin onto the bobbin winding spindle and you'll feel it and hear it click into place. You'll want to make sure this is all the way on or the thread might wind around this bobbin winding spindle itself. Move the bobbin winding spindle over to the right and continue to hold this tail of thread while you wind. Press the foot control to start winding. When you bury the tail, clip the thread flush with the top of the bobbin. Then continue winding until the bobbin is full or you're satisfied with how much thread is on your bobbin. Move the bobbin winding spindle back to the left, take off the bobbin, and trim the thread. Before we place our bobbin into the machine, turn your hand wheel towards you to make sure the needle is in the highest position. So place the bobbin into the bobbin case, and pull on the tail. The bobbin will spin towards the right or in a clockwise motion. The first place we're going to put the thread is in this little notch. And then we're going to bring it under this plate to this opening. And you will feel it and hear it click in. Then pull on this tab 
and make sure this finger is pointed upwards or at 12 o'clock. And insert it into the bobbin holder. You'll feel it seat into the bobbin holder. Go ahead and leave this tail. We'll need it when we bring up the bobbin thread. If you've just inserted your bobbin into your machine, it probably looks like this with a thread tail hanging off. That's fine and we'll come right back to that. Make sure your needle is in the highest position and you'll be able to tell because the take-up lever will show at the top of the machine. Raise the presser foot and come up to the top of the machine. After winding a bobbin, the top of your machine probably looks like this. So I'm going to take the thread off of the bobbin winding tension disc and it's already in guide number one. I'm going to bring it under this white thread guide and bring it down number two, do a U-turn at number three, and bring it up to number four, which is the take-up lever, and bring it from the right over to the left, and you'll see the thread go to the eye of the take-up lever. It's very important that the thread ends up here or the machine will not sew correctly. Bring the thread back down to number five and put it behind the metal guide right above the needle. Push down on the built-in needle threader and bring the thread under and around that metal hook. Now the needle threader will be encompassing the needle on each side. Put the thread in between the prongs and continue to hold it for a little bit of tension and release the built-in needle threader. There will be a little loop in the back and pull the loop and the needle is threaded. Now the last thing we need to do to complete threading our machine is bring up the bobbin thread. Hold the upper thread tail in your hand and turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle goes down and all the way back up. Now if I pull on this thread tail, the loop of thread from the bobbin pops up. So I'm going to pull this up and bring both threads underneath the presser foot. And last, close this door. Now our machine is threaded. Let's test a stitch. Now we're ready to test a stitch to make sure our machine is threaded properly. Our stitch length dial and stitch selector dial are already selected for a straight stitch. So I'm going to place my fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. Turn the handwheel towards you so the needle is in the highest position and starts to go downwards. Raise the presser foot and trim the threads. My stitches look good on the top and the bottom. If your stitches look like this on top, but look loopy on the bottom, that means that your upper thread probably isn't threaded properly. Rethread the machine and check out your user's manual for more information. Now let's sew a seam. Now we're going to sew a seam. My machine is already set up for the straight stitch, but if yours isn't, all you need to do is turn your stitch selector dial so it's on the straight stitch, and you'll feel it click into place. On my dial, I see a black stitch and a blue stitch. And to know which stitch I'm going to do, I'm gonna come up to the stitch length dial, and I see a black range of numbers and a blue S1. To sew the black stitch, I need my stitch length selected in this black area and two and a half is pretty standard, so I'm going to keep it there. Up at the top, we have our green stitch width dial, and for a straight stitch, you want it set to zero because a st straight stitch has no stitch width. Take your fabric. On our needle plate, you'll see some markings. The third line from the presser foot is for a 5 8 seam allowance, which is a very common seam allowance on projects. Place your fabric so it lines up with the third line, and lower your presser foot. Sew so forward a few stitches. Press and hold the reverse lever to sew backwards a few stitches. Release the reverse lever and continue down your seam. When you reach the end of your fabric, press and hold the reverse lever and sew backwards a few stitches. Release and sew to the end. Always remember to turn the hand wheel towards you. If you turn your hand wheel backwards or away from you, it'll cause your machine to jam the next time you sew. So remember, always turn it towards you. Raise the presser foot and trim the thread. 
I did reverse stitching at the beginning and the end of my seam to keep it from coming unraveled as I work on my project. Now let's take a look at some of our other stitches. Next I want to try out a zigzag stitch. So I'm going to turn my stitch selector dial to the zigzag and I see my stitch length is already a two and a half, which is about medium. So I'm going to come up to my stitch width, which ranges from zero to five, and also put it at about two and a half. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to put my fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and sew. And here we have just a medium zigzag. Next, let's make a narrow and short zigzag. So I'm going to shorten my stitch length down to one, and I'm going to move my stitch width down to one as well. Let's see what this looks like. Here we have a very small zigzag. Now I'm going to keep the stitch length at a one, but let's move the width all the way up to five. And let's check this one out. and there's what short and wide looks like. Now, let's go back to stitch length and let's make it as long as I can at number four. And we'll leave the width at five, so it's as long and wide as it can be. Let's try sewing that out. Check out how different all of these zigzag stitches are because I played with my length and width dials. Now let's take a look at another decorative stitch. Now I want to sew one of the blue stitches. I'm going to turn my stitch selector dial and I'm going to select this feather stitch because I think it's pretty. I'm going to go up to the stitch length dial and move it so that there's an S1. Blue and blue. Now the blue stitches are typically called stretch stitches, but we can also use them for decorative purposes. My stitch width dial is set to five, which is really nice for these kinds of stitches. So I'm going to test sew it out. And there's our feather stitch. Now I want to sew a slant over edge stitch. This is a very popular stitch. So I see there's blue and blue and my stitch width is at five. So let's try this out. This machine has a lot of great different stitches, so play around with your dials, have some fun, and now let's make a buttonhole. The first thing I'm going to do before making my buttonhole is place my button onto my project where I want the buttonhole to be, and I'm going to mark the bottom of the button. And that's where my buttonhole is going to start. Then, I'm just going to make a straight line going back, and this will be a guideline when I sew the buttonhole. Next, I'm going to get my buttonhole foot, so I'm going to open up 
my accessory storage tray. and get my buttonhole foot. Up here where there's a button icon, I'm going to open it up, place my button inside, and push it so that it's snug with my button. Now I need to change the foot. To remove the all-purpose presser foot, I'm going to push this little metal lever behind it, and the foot just pops off. Then, I'm going to snap the one-step buttonhole foot in place. Then I'm going to lower the buttonhole lever and push it to the back. Okay. Now I want to select the buttonhole stitch. So I'm going to come to the stitch selector dial and move it so the buttonhole stitch is selected. Then I'm going to come up to the stitch length dial and move it so that it's in this buttonhole zone icon. Now for this, if I'm selected towards the zero, the stitches will be closer together. And if I'm set a little more towards the one, the stitches will be a little further apart. I recommend testing out a few buttonholes to make sure you get what you like for your project. I'm going to set it a little bit closer to the zero. Then I'm gonna come up to the stitch width dial and I see it's already set for number five and that's where we want it for a buttonhole. Now we're ready to stitch it out. I'm going to bring my fabric up to the side of the presser foot and line up the horizontal line with the opening in the buttonhole foot. I'm going to lower the presser foot and begin sewing. Stop sewing when the buttonhole gets back to the beginning and turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle is in the highest position and about to go back down into the fabric. Raise the presser foot and here's your buttonhole. To secure the stitching of my buttonhole, I'm going to take the tail that was at the end and use a hand sewing needle and bring this thread towards the back. and then I'm going to tie it in place. Next, take a pin and place it through the top bar tack of your buttonhole. This way, when I open up the buttonhole, I don't cut through this upper bar tack. In your accessory tray, you got the seam ripper, and it's also very handy for opening buttonholes. Place it into the bottom, and carefully work your way up. Remove the pin, and you have a buttonhole perfectly sized for your button. Now let's see how to change a needle. Before I change my needle, I'm going to turn off the machine. And a little helpful tip, I'm going to use a piece of paper to cover the hole in my needle plate so I don't accidentally drop my needle into my machine. Hold the needle and take the screwdriver that came in your accessory tray and turn the screw towards you to loosen it. And remove your needle. Take a new needle with the flat side towards the back and insert it as high as it will go and turn the screw away from you to tighten it. And there you are. You just changed a needle. That's our video. Now you're ready to get started on your projects. For more information, check out the Singer website. Happy sewing!